I don't care what anybody says. The opening of the four kids dub slaps the hardest. Wings Club, a serial cartoon starting in 2004, has magic, friendship, pretty outfits, bad dubbing, and easy to pull Twitter profile pics, making it an icon of its genre. Of course, becoming so popular results in ripoffs and copycats. As an avid girl cartoon enjoyer and just female-centric media as a whole, if there's one thing I'm sure of, it's that any girl show with magic will have someone trying to find some way to relate it to Winx Club. You're our favorite Winx. We all wish we were just like you. No problem. I had people commenting it under my trolls video, which you don't even have to watch, just look at it. What? What are you what are you people on about? And I am a very big fan of Wings Club. I've seen literally every single dub, the movies, I own multiple DVDs and the first comic, and I've even watched World of Winx. Only two episodes, but I still did that. With this, I've noticed the trend of repeat offenders when it comes to being accused of ripping off Winx Club. And I've also maybe accused some shows of ripping off Winx Club. So are these shows commonly dubbed as ripoffs actually that bad? Or is it just people being annoying? The answer will surprise you. We are the Winx. In 2016, Regal Academy is about a teenager named Rose, who discovers a key that leads to fairy tale land, where fairy tale characters are real and go to high school because, of course, they do. She ends up at their school, Regal Academy, after finding out that she's the granddaughter of the headmistress Cinderella, and we watch as she learns how to use magic while having adventures with her friends. This show is nothing like Wings Club. I've commonly associated the two, but after an actual watch through, there is nothing to compare the two unless you get really shallow and reach really hard, like. Hey, Sean Beast kind of looks like season 8 Sky, and Astoria is kind of like Flora a bit, as long as you don't watch more than like five episodes. In one episode, they have this transformation scene, which is very later season Winx esque of them, like a lot, which makes sense because they're made by the same production company. They're actually sister shows under Rainbow and have Eugenio Strafi as co creator, who also created Winx Club. So, no shit that this scene is similar. And I also guess why people have a natural inkling to call it a copy despite it not being one. However, there's another show that Regal Academy is compared to a lot, that being Ever After High. Starting in 2013, Ever After High is a doll line starring fairy tale characters in high school because of course they are. The characters have predetermined fates based on their fairy tale ancestor and work to either follow that path or carve their own, being assigned a royal or rebel label. But the dolls are also came episodes starting in 2013 and later Netflix specials. So what similarities does it share with this? None. I hate to break it to you, but there's no comparison really. Characters, storytelling, plots, they're all different. The only similarity I can tell you is that in 2016, Ever After High had the Dragon Game special, and the second episode of Real Academy is about a dragon race, but this episode would have been made way before the air date. It's really just by chance that they ended up lining up with Ever After High. And in Real Academy, a dragon race makes more sense because you see the dragons literally all the time in that show. The main comparison of the two really comes from, oh my god, they made a show based off fairy tale kids in high school? Which Okay, not that new of a concept to be honest. And this might sound crazy, but if you like fairy tale kids in high school, wouldn't you be happier that you get even more fairy tale kids in high school? So I'm gonna say, not a ripoff. Airing in 2014, Lolly Rock is about a normal girl named Iris who finds out she's not normal at all and has magical powers when she's found by Talia and Ariana, members of the girl band Lolly Rock. They team up to protect Earth from Grammar, Grammar, Grammar. Oh shit, I forgot how to say his name. They team up to protect Earth from Grammar while also being in a band because I guess they just want to be in a band. There's there's really no reason for them to be in a band, to be honest. Now, Lolly Rock actually does have some decent comparisons to Winx. The main character, Iris, is a lost princess with seemingly dead parents similar to Bloom. They've got full-out transformations and magical powers, as well as princess characters and evil henchmen who work for a greater evil. Overall, plot structure and world building can also be compared, but to do that means to imply that Winx Club invented this stuff when it didn't. Those are already common tropes in the fantasy genre or were taken from Japanese magic 
Magical Girl shows. The creators of Y Rock themselves said they were heavily inspired by a bunch of different Magical Girl shows, and there's clear resemblance to stuff like Sailor Moon and Pretty Cure through the transformation style, villains coming back with a new scheme every week, suddenly getting a random superpower, and especially the animation choices. One look at the opening and you know oh, we made this. Pretty Rhythm, you have the rights to sue. But like I said, it takes inspiration. It very much has its own style of characters and way of storytelling and just sharing similarities doesn't make it a cash grabbing copy. To say that the show is a ripoff means that you also think Wings Club itself is a ripoff since they share the same inspiration and tropes. So this one is also not a ripoff. Yes, this one is. Airing back in 2009, Angel Friends is about angels and devils who watch over humans and steer them to do good and bad. And what happens when an angel named Raph and a devil Solstice fall in love? At first glance and a quick watch, similarities to Wings Club are clear. The angels and devils have fairy-like wings and transformations into their human form. Both go to competing angel and devil schools and have magical powers they use to fight each other. Both shows are Italian in origin, with this one coming from Mondo, a kid's television company that's a competitor to Rai where they air wings club however like i said before none of that stuff is unique oh a good and bad school magical powers transformation it's almost like all those things are regular motifs in fantasy media and commonly seen a lot of the so-called wings ripoffs are compared to a show like this in bad faith ignoring how wings club did not invent any of these things and how it also takes heavy inspiration from things like sailor moon and harry potter and wings club themselves have gotten into controversies seemingly copying other material I remember watching the season 6 opening and something always felt so familiar about it. Probably because they took Girls' Generation's paparazzi choreography in this shot and they copied a Girls' Generation music video again years later in World of Winks. Nobody thought it was weird that they have a whole class called Potionology in Alfia when they're literally fairies and have no reason to make potions. No, we didn't. Because Harry Potter had a potions class and every magical school ever has a potions class. Angel Friends probably gets the most amount of hate for being a ripoff. And if those are your points, you're way off. So why did I say yes, it is a ripoff? Well, it's not a ripoff, but it is a knockoff. The show is based off of a comic series and those comparisons I mentioned before are all in the comic and normal for the genre. But specific changes they made to the show adaption were clearly done as a way to trick kids into thinking that this show was like Wings Club in order to get them to watch it. For example, Sweet. She's a character who doesn't exist in the comic, but in this show she's a sidekick who's sometimes airheaded and the energy of the group. She's also the fashionista, almost like somebody else we know. She's also Raph, the main character's second best friend, and the overall theme of friendship is pushed like crazy in this show despite it not being one in the comics. The Angel Friends comic is called Angel Friends because the angels are like friends to the humans, you know, your angel friends, but the Angel Friends TV show is called Angel Friends because the angels are friends with each other. And you want to know what they call their group? Angel Friends! Also, not to mention Raph is voiced by Lisa Jacqueline, who's also Bloom's voice actress in the 4 Kids dub. Which, hey, that's possible, but Mickey, the one Asian character being voiced by Lisa Ortez, who also voices Musa in the 4 Kids dub, that seems like a little too convenient of a casting. Wow! If I had a nickel for every time I was doomed by a puppet, I'd have two nickels! Which isn't a lot, but it's weird that it happened twice, right? Raph in general is the main reason people complain about this being a ripoff, and I mean, yeah. She's a hot-headed leader obsessed with her friends, her palette was changed from pink to blue, and she's sad a lot, but like, angsty teenage girls a character type will never escape. But without a doubt, this was hired in the show to resemble Bloom. Also, they're all teenagers in this, despite being preteens in the comics. The outfits for the angels are all changed to look more modern and fairy-esque. They even have a glitter effect on them. Aesthetics and motifs were mainly changed and clearly changed in a way to get little kids thinking about Wings Club and then watching this. But everything else about the show is different to an extreme. 
degree. And by the end of my watch, I completely forgot about these comparisons at all. So while not a ripoff, it does give Bargain Bin Wings Club. So not a ripoff, but a knockoff. Uh-oh, the big guns. I'm gonna ask you to stop writing a paragraph and just hear me out on this one. Erin 2004, which is also an Italian cartoon about five girls, Will, Irma, Tyranny, Cornelia, and Halen, who have magical powers corresponding with the classical elements of quintessence, water, fire, earth, and air, which they use to fulfill their duties as guardians of the veil. Of course, they're a group of magical girls. There's themes of friendship. The main character, Will, is hot-headed and bright-headed, similar to Bloom. However, I'm going to stop there. I can keep pointing out these little things, but as I've said, it's dumb. They're just tropes or there's very small comparisons that aren't really unique at all. And to say that Witch is a ripoff of Wings Club is just not true. That is, if you watch the two shows and talk about the plot and storytelling. Witch is actually an adaption of 2001 comic series. It was acquired by Disney and right before releasing the TV show adaption, they decided to sue Wings Club, which had started airing two years earlier. The lawsuit Disney issued was extreme also because they're pretty much called to end Wings Club and talk prove that Wings Club was in production before the first Witch comic came out, but the damage was done. This lawsuit would start a fan war so powerful that 20 years later, it's still going on. But before we get into that, let's talk more about that Disney lawsuit. Shout out to Talky Tilki, the Winx Wiki Tumblr, and Winx Club Lucci and Ombre, as most of this info is from them and they're all linked down below. Wings Club was conceived in 1999 and spent time in development and production until 2004 when it was officially released. Meanwhile, the Witch comic was conceived back in 1997 with it officially coming out in 2001. Given this timeline, it is possible Wings Club took some inspiration from the Witch comics as they were still in development after the comic came out. Wings changed a lot from the pilot Magical Bloom and the similarities it gained towards Witch all came after the Witch comics were released, like the multiracial characters and less targeting towards a preschool audience. This seems to be the case also because the two properties had overlapping artists. They had a lot of freelance artists working for them and the animation industry in Italy was not that big. Neither was the comic industry, so it's very likely these artists brought in overlapping ideas that were later finalized without even meaning to. For example, there is Wings concept art that mimics that of official witch art, and you can place some characters like Stella and Cornelia right next to each other and see design similarities, and even some basic character similarities. What Disney was basically trying to claim was that Wings could be viewed as a knockoff of witch and look similar enough to make kids think they were the same. Kind of like what Angel Friends did to Wings Club. And I mean, if you saw these two comic covers as a child, it's possible you could get them mixed up and think that they were kind of the same thing. But in my opinion, I still believe this lawsuit is kind of weak. Especially with the info that they had overlapping crew, I don't think Wings completely deserved to be scrubbed from the world like the lawsuit wanted or had actual malicious intent behind their so-called copying. But it doesn't matter. The lawsuit resulted in Wings fans hating Witch and anything having to do with it. Wings was always seen as a more feminine, magical girl show while Witch was like its edgier, tomboy version. And different people grew up with either Winx or Witch, so of course, all that combined naturally leading to fighting and accusations of copying each other. Uh, girls. Stay out of this! While normal people could recognize that they definitely overlap, and maybe Disney and Rainbow should have had some crew members sign NDA so that this didn't happen, a number of fans still conjured up spy rumors, insisting that the two shows had staff going to work for the other side and steal their ideas behind their back. To this day, you can find people arguing back and forth online which one's better, and in older internet days, you were not allowed to like both. It was one or the other, and there are still people to this day who refuse to watch one show because they can't get over this feud. And as a proud Winx fan, I I'm going to say which is not a ripoff, but Winx absolutely took inspiration from which and were well aware that they could be seen similar once it came time for a release. And if we were in 2004 right now, I might have even called it a knockoff, and that is okay. While it's not completely fine and it should be acknowledged that tricking kids into thinking you're another property is wrong, it's also been 20 years and the two brands have established themselves as very different and have been successful in their own right. And it is very weird at this point to completely put off Witch because you were upset by the lawsuit against Winx that had nothing to do with any of the people who actually made Witch. Which leads me to the final point and the overall point I've been trying to make, which is that all these shows that have been played by being Winx Club copies and ripoffs only get that label by bad faith fans who can't handle there being more than one show for girls. It's been a reoccurring theme that these comparisons ring hollow and have no basis, but even when you manage to call it out, people will end the conversation with, well, I like Winx Club better. That's fine, but why can't you only like one? 
And this is something that we don't hear about cartoons marketed towards boys. It's very commonly believed that Ever After High ended as a franchise because of Disney's descendants. Because despite Ever After High being around for a lot longer and being popular, how could they possibly compete with Disney coming out with a similar idea? So they ended Ever After High. They didn't even wait to see if it could survive. They just ended it, not even trying to compete. People hear this and go, okay, that makes sense. But when Yu-Gi-Oh! came out in 1999, Pokemon was huge and had existed way before it. It was founded by Nintendo. And yet the Yu-Gi-Oh! card game was still made and managed to be successful. Bakugan and Beyblade are two similar toy lines that easily coexist. And a couple years later, even Yo-Kai Watch was there. Why was that allowed? But Ever After High and Descendants just could not coexist. Maybe the real reason Mattel saw it better to end Descendants was because they knew when it comes to girls, there's no coexistence. There's only rivalry. Why? Because women are pit against each other in every way, all the time. Whether it's stuff like Haley vs. Selena or Barbie vs. Bratz, Girls' Generation vs. 21, G1 Monster High vs. G3 Monster High, Buddy Pretty vs. Frog Pretty vs. Cat Pretty vs. Fox Pretty, and Christina vs. Britney. It's never ending. I mean, what the fuck? Can I live? Can I live? Can I fucking live? Boys cartoons just have them coming up with hypothetical situations where the G.I. Joe crew fights Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, but girls have to personally align their whole identity with one cartoon. Are you a Bratz girl, a Barbie girl, or a Monster High girl? Here's what you look like based off of which doll you like the most. Here's what it says about your whole identity based off of which doll you like the most because you can only like and be one. A woman has to fit some sort of archetype and only one. And I'm not saying that this stuff isn't fun. Doing your makeup like a Bratz versus a Barbie is silly and cute, yes, but two things can be true at once. While it's also true that some of this is fun competition, it's also true that these corporations have used the constant rivalry between women that already exists in real life and the constant pressure of having to be an easily identifiable and understandable woman to their benefit to force us into choosing their one product and basing our identity off of it in order to put down their competition for them, just like we're conditioned to do against one another in real life. We all had a pick me phase because the patriarchy made us have a pick me phase. You can be a Bratz girl, a Barbie girl, and a Monster High girl all at once because it literally does not mean anything. Y'all, Barbie girls or bad girls? Barbecue. We're in a time where girl-centric media isn't common and it has never been consistent or common to begin with because of this reason. If we ever want it to be, we have to stop hating. And I know some people will watch this and go, it's not that deep. And you're probably right, it's not that deep. But I invite you to maybe make it that deep. Maybe this trend of having to choose one and be like one when it comes to simple girls cartoons movies, dolls, and real life women is an after effect of something much bigger. Maybe by acting this way, we're still falling for internalized misogyny that only exists when we can continue to separate from one another and buy more shit from big corporations. People I see getting into these fandom fights with like witch vs winks aren't malicious. They actually love girl-centric media and are very passionate about it, but truly the only people that get harmed by having to choose sides is the audience because we stop ourselves from watching great shows. To end this video, I'm going to feature Ho Ho Ho, Ho 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 Ho's Gossip Girls music video. This, this right here, is the ultimate piece of Girls Cartoon Alliance. And we will never see anything like this in our lifetime if we keep going this way, alright?